pleasure to have you join me today on the program Held in Living. My name is Adesua Usa Owage. Today on the program, we're going to be looking at birth defects and congenital malfunction or congenital abnormalities. That's what we're going to be looking at today. And Dr. Steve Obama, consultant, gynecologist, one G doctor, and uh, a facility expert is the one we're going to be talking with today, and is going to be joining us from the United States of, uh, from United Kingdom. Yeah. So, Dr. Steve, it's nice to have you join us today on the program. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you for the last Monday of the year. <laughs> yes, the last Monday of the year, indeed. Yeah. All right, Doctor, so nice to have you dealing with us today on the program. We want to look at birth defects and congenital abnormalities or malfunction, as the case may be. Can you just tell us what we mean by birth defects and uh, congenital malfunction, Doctor? Yeah, congenital malformations. Malformation, uh, yes. Yeah. My malformations and uh, well, birth defects that the general name in the population, uh, congenital malformations, they can arise spontaneously. These are abnormalities you see in a baby okay. just immediately after birth. It is an, an, an anatomical problem. So when the baby is born, usually the nurses take the baby, carry out a thorough physical examination. That is what the eyes can see. Okay. You don't need to do any blood tests or carry out any radiological investigation to determine the birth defect. Other major birth defects might come later on, for example, when the kidneys are not there, when, we, uh, when the heart is not there or the heart is not in the right place, or we call that sort of tissue. But what the eyes can see, what the nurses can see, the midwives, immediately they take the baby from the mother, yeah. separating it from the umbilical cord, and examine the baby, you know, on the bed, on the table. If we start from the head, you can see some babies, they may have a small head. Okay. Doctors will call it microcephaly. There are those who will have bigger heads. Okay. We we'll call it hydrocephaly. Okay. In the case of microcephaly, it's just, you know, as a, possibly as a result of infection in the mother very early, you know, during the gestation. Infestations that occur prior to the 16th week, you know, that's where the problem occurs. Okay. But generally, problems that occur prior to 8 weeks, when the notochord that the bone and the brain that ultimately you know develops into all parts of the body it has uh, an end to them and then end to them and mess with them this one develops into the head the limbs the abdomen and the other organs including the bladder and the reproductive organ within the body so okay. when there are different when these defects or when this malformation occurs then, at the level, but before the 13th week of gestation, yes. you can have a baby having a small head. And people will be teasing that, oh, this baby has a small head. Is it, is it, a, is it a possible to... Is it not possible to detect all of this malformation before the baby is born, you know, through uh, ultrascan and the rest? Ultrascan scan, yes. It's, it's possible to uh, detect all these babies, but, you know, you have to take into consideration the beliefs of the mother. One, is a congenital malformation associated with normal life, with normal baby. If somebody has a small head and the brain is intact, then there is no problem. If somebody has got a big head and the brain is intact and functional, there is no problem. If somebody has got a club foot, you know, where, where the legs are bold and the, 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 the foot come to the, together, as we see in some babies, then that cannot interfere with the life of the baby. That cannot interfere with the baby growing up to becoming an intelligent person okay. because the brain is intact and that baby's corpus mentis. In which case, that baby will be allowed to develop ultrascan 
ultrasound scan detection okay. or not. So you see that then you would do a scan, you see some babies. Instead of having five fingers, they have six. Yes. Or instead of having five separated fingers, you can see maybe the last two they join together. Or in the lower limbs they join and form a web. You call it web uh, web feet. If it occurs on one leg and web foot if it occurs on only one leg. So these are congenital malformation that can you can live with. I grow up and become uh, a normal adult uh, who takes place in the society. Other common ones that people readily see are cleft lip. Cleft okay. lip can just be only cleft lip. In which case, it's only the lip. Only it the can lip. be repaired surgically. It's before, these people used to wait for a couple of years. If it's just the lip, they don't wait a couple of years before they repair it because they don't want to subject the baby to general anesthesia. But now you can do it in the neonatal period, because you have, you know, versatile, you know, pediatric surgeons. You can take it on board and sort it out. It's a minor problem. Then, but sometimes it goes beyond the lip. It prepares the palate. That the upper roof of the, okay. the mouth. So depending on the SM, repair the have to be delayed, you know, for up to two years. So that the, the baby does not aspirate and die because okay. there's a connection. Anything that goes into the pipe, the airway can kill the baby. Thank you. So we do not want any blood or clot or infection to go into the airway. So this is the baby is not, um, the malformation is not repaired until the baby grows mm-hmm. and uh, become a young adult. So people do it around five, around five years. But you see, you have to take into consideration the, the teasing of the baby by the parents and the psychological effect of the baby if this is not done at the appropriate time. So that's in the case of special clear name, palate, polytactic, or special club food, you know, and this is a one special microcephaly and hydrocephaly. In the case of hydrocephaly, you know, it's an abnormality that results in the inappropriate positioning of the drainage of the cerebrospinal fluid within okay. the head. So this can be done while the baby is still in utero. Here, yeah. all you need to uh, all the standards so pass the whole time far and remove the fluid and pass that fluid into the into the blood system. Okay. So the cerebrospinal fluid, instead of increasing and making the head to swell, you know, separating the, the sutures of the head, you know, the fluid is removed because cerebrospinal fluid and it flows down and goes into the blood system. And that the baby will survive without any uh, serious defect. Because it will allow pressure of the uh, amniotic fluid yeah, okay, to compress the brain, and the brain does not go, then the baby cannot perform very well, you know, in the, when it's going on. All right, Dr. For, for, for the purpose of emphasis, can you quickly tell us the curses? What are they responsible for the purpose of the babies? All these are measures that are usually due to infections. What what, what kind of infection would you like to know? General bacteria, viral infection. The commonest one is viral infection. You know, this is a viral infection that can cause this earlier or before the the tenth week. You know, in the a dry dry life. Mm. So it's always very advisable to tell the mothers who have just missed their period to ensure they do not get infected uh, very early on, you know, in, mm. in their pregnancy. Okay. Most of these, they are viral. Some of them you see in party. What you see in party, uh, you know, these are food that uh, is just made, uh, they are not cooked, they are cooked food. Okay. That eat, um, very common here, uh, and this can be exposed to uh, infection. So a, 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 pregnant uh, woman, a pregnant woman should be very careful what she eats? Absolutely. 
Yes. Mm. So eating outside when you don't know how those food were prepared uh, is not advisable. But if you eat, they must eat. They, they must get to a certified restaurant. Mm. A restaurant has been certified to produce clean food whose vendors have been also certified okay. in terms of health management of food uh, during preparation and during service. So all these are very important. Uh, in pregnant uh, uh, women. Okay, so, Doctor, does it have uh, anything to do with uh, hereditary? Because some persons have given no, no, birth to no, children no, and no, then no. maybe the next one will come up with the same problem. Another, no, another. No, I, was, no. I was watching a documentary the other day where a woman gave birth to three kids, uh, some one of those African countries, and all three kids were looking like... Um, uh, this is not to insult the woman and the kids. They were all looking like apes. You know, and yeah, well, one, one uh, is, you uh, know, tempted there, there to was ask. Uh, there was this viral infection that was detected in South America, very common in Brazil. You okay. know, it's a Zika virus. And uh, this, the infestation of mothers with this virus leads to the death of uh, microcephalic babies. Babies who say they are small. You know, this is a viral infection. Would we not routinely scream for them? So there are infections people scream for by every single uh, HIV and all that. But, but, but uh, Zika virus, people don't scream for them, especially in Europe and in, uh, in Africa. That's also how it happens. People don't scream for them here yeah, because it's not common. Mm -hmm. They scream for them in the US because there were a few cases that were detected. Mm -hmm. uh, the California area, you know, in, in, in 2014. That's when it was quite rampant in the world. So it's associated with microcephaly. It is possible that the mother uh, who has been infected with such a virus yes. will produce subsequent babies, you know, that will be microcephaly. Okay, so, though, though, does it have anything to do with age as well? Because sometimes they tell you the age of a woman contributes to the quality of baby she brings forth. Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, it is not 100%. The, the age of the woman, you know, can contribute to how the baby is. Because at that age, when, when the woman is aging, the, in, in her own phrase, the old sites that are left behind are aged old sites. They may not divide appropriately. So also is in the male. The spermatozoa may not divide uh, appropriately. So but in that case of the male, they may not fertilize. But in the case of the female, no, they will go on to have uh, to be fertilized and go through stages to embryo, becoming features, and then they have any baby, until the baby matures, and the baby is delivered with these problems. And yet, you know, scourge does not occur. But there are chromosomes that usually associated with, you know, miscarriages. When these chromosomes affect the, the, the human oocyte, then the, the miscarriage takes place. Okay. What my system weighs by the fourth to me. So God is so kind in, in his uh, mercies to ensure that these abnormal babies are self-selected and removed down to where they become uh, viable. Because from 20 weeks, after the 16 week, the baby only grows all the features are there, all the features, the hair and height, everything. It's just for the brain to go and mature all the other things to, to mature. So that's what happened. So the, the definition of uh, uh, miscarriage, the baby that gets up to 24 weeks, you know, is regarded as a normal baby that has been delivered. Okay. So that's the thing. So this, this can occur because of abnormal chromosome. Older women tend to produce babies with abnormal chromosome. Not only the women, so also are uh, the male. They can produce, you know, abnormal chromosomes. So when they do a similar analysis, you, you now look at the percentage of the abnormal forms. 
you know, in such uh, chromosomes, in such spermatozoa mm. uh, in, the, in the male. So that's in the case of the malformation risk of chromosomal uh, uh, origin. But there are all other types called inborn errors, you know, of, of metabolism associated with babies, like phenyl ketonuria. Okay. But you can do that, do that just by looking at it. So the congenital malformations are what, you know, anybody that sees the baby, once the baby is on the bed, we know there's something wrong. Yeah, so if you let the baby has uh, three fingers instead of five, you know, before everybody did go to medical school, we know. So that will, those are the abnormalities where we are uh, uh, referring to uh, here. Okay, somebody quickly sent in a question to say that uh, when uh, it is discovered during ultra scan and other mode that a baby may have a problem or the other, is it not possible to use drugs or uh, other things like they do in advanced countries like to rectify the, the problem? Yes, there are, there are problems that can be rectified, but there are also problems that cannot be identified. Okay. If a mazoro's problem is in the system, it cannot be removed. Because by removing that, you are eliminating the baby. But if one gene, or just one gene, like a gene defect, we see the gene that is associated with hemoglobinopathies okay. in our part of the world, we call sickle cell disease. Okay. Then it's just a change of one protein from Berlin at the sixth position from Berlin in order to glutamine. This, this, this uh, protein has been changed. We'll be in all the cells in the body. To remove all of them will be to eliminate the baby. What you need to do is to, you know, do transplant, bone marrow transplant, so that the appropriate uh, protein will get injected into okay. the right position. Okay. And subsequently, the baby, the bone, that baby's bone marrow, will start to produce the appropriate uh, you know, protein. Okay. In which case, but we're talking about the hemoglobin protein. We'll be producing hemoglobin A rather than hemoglobin S or hemoglobin SS, as the case may be. Okay, so we're, 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 we're going to take a short break. Um, the program held the living on independent television and to pave way for other programs. But we are continuing the discussion on Go TV, Channel 107, and Star Times, Channel 130. So if you have Go TV or Star Times, please hook up on Channel 107, Go TV, and Channel 130, Star Times. So let's quickly do that break now, and then we'll continue on these channels. When I was younger, a lot of things were different. Unfortunately, most of the differences I see now are heartbreaking and are not good at all. Before now, men were strong, protectors of the weak, fathers, brothers, lovers, sons. Their mere presence guaranteed the safety of women and children. But what do we have now? Men harassing and raping women. Men sexually abusing little girls. Men battering and killing their wives. Any form of sexual assault, be it rape or pedophilia, is a killer of human service team. Women should stop dying in silence. Speak up! The rapist should be stigmatized, not the victim. Rape. I dread the sound of that word. I think death sentence should be the consequence of such a terrible act. And you mothers, build trust and confidence in our children. Believe them when they report and take necessary action. Talking of mothers, before now, women were virtuous. They were mothers, sisters, lovers and daughters, nurturing, counseling, and supporting their men for. But now, women are trafficking female children for money. Women are stabbing and cutting off the genitals of their men. All this must stop, and it must stop now. Free men don't rape, molest or abuse women and children. It's inhuman, it's barbaric, it's unacceptable. Let real men stand with us. 
and together say an emphatic no to rape, abuse, and domestic violence. Thank you very much for staying with us on the program, Healthy Living on Independent Television. Okay, Doc, I was talking about um, correcting any malformation while the baby is sitting in the womb with drugs or other means. How possible is that? Uh, well, with drugs, uh, well, there are very, very few um, you can control with drugs. You can correct with drugs. You can manage it. For example, somebody has a failing heart because the person is losing blood in utero or as a result of excessive hemolysis of the baby, but the result in actual immunization when the baby is producing cells that are being destroyed. So the heart starts failing, the baby becomes intimatous, and the baby almost always succumbs in utero. But in that, in that situation, you can't correct it by uh, giving uh, the baby, uh, giving the mother drugs, or giving or treating the baby as well. But in most of these cases, it's, it's surgical decompensation okay. when the farm is, is out to uh, the mother's womb to the baby to decompensate, you know, the failing heart, so that the heart can cope with the amount of blood that is uh, coming to it. There are situations where you know the baby's heart, the baby's heart may be open. What we hope patent doctors, you know, uh, the the oxygenated blood missing with the oxygenated blood, and in that case, the baby will not try. So now, you know. It's possible to correct such um, defects, and the baby will survive and have a normal life. Some procedures can be done as early as 24 weeks, then or 26 weeks, and allowing the baby to go to jail. Sometimes you have conjoined twins. When babies are joined in the head, on the follow pickers or at the level of the abdomen or fallow, pagos, as the case may be, and they can be separated in your tutor. You will then SLRize the babies, the two babies, separate them and put them back and allow them to go to them. Will the baby be able to live normal life? Will they grow like normal babies? Absolutely. Will they have problems later in life? Absolutely. When the baby is alive, 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 when the babies are sterilized, when we do what we call a hysterotomy, um, putting a hole yeah. in, the, in the womb and getting the baby out, they, 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 they are not separated from the mother's um, uh, placenta. Yeah. The, cord, the umbilical cord is intact. Still at, intact okay. And all these procedures can be carried out and uh, they, they are returned. They may, so in certain situation, not going to labor part of the time, or go premature labor. But they may end up doing an emergency section so as to get the baby out in optimal condition. So that is the that is the situation okay. uh, in terms of when you have problems. Okay, sometimes there are or others that may not, you know, uh, coexist with life and in which case when these babies are born you know uh, these babies within a few a few weeks or a few months they will pass okay. because the projectile malformation you know is not it cannot coexist uh, with life so they pass on and sometimes to obviate the end of a mother delivering the baby at 28 weeks and 29 weeks and the baby mm -hmm. dying then they, if you take that you might want to remove the baby earlier on at 14 weeks or 16 weeks uh, when it's easier to take the baby out mm -hmm. but the, the parents will give full consent after detailed what we call 
in form concept. They have to know uh, the possible, what the problem is, uh, the options that are available uh, in terms of management, A U T R S U T R and later on in life, um, so that we can make their choice, it's an informed choice. Mm. And once they decide, then it's well for the team to take a decision and go into action. Okay, we, we, we talked about infection has been one of the cause of um, uh, malformation, baby defects or congenital malformation. Let's look at the issue of uh, other conditions like diabetes and hypertension. I've heard women who suffer diabetes bringing forth uh, children with um, one form of defect or the other. How true is this? And also those who are suffering from high blood pressure, doctor. Yeah, it's, been, it's been shown that babies... High, high blood pressure, not really, but diabetes, yes. Uh, babies of um, diabetic quarters tend to have a higher uh, incidence of um, malformation. It has to do with this uh, abnormal glucose metabolism that interferes, you know, with, with the growth of the baby. And what happens at, um, at the cellular level of the vision? Trust to ensure this baby develops appropriately and growing to a healthy child. But in case of diabetes, we always insist that there's need for a pre pregnancy attendance of training. That's a pre pregnancy uh, training uh, monitoring to ensure that diabetes is controlled impeccably so that mothers. syndrome because it is uh, it used to be like people saying that uh, uh, only aged women give birth to children who come down with Down syndrome but we have also discovered that younger couples also do have um, this uh, issue so doc how do we manage this is this something that can be detected and rectified immediately uh, this, this uh, problem. yes So they will opt for 
termination of pregnancy. It is not it is not something you can treat. You cannot change uh, an individual's chromosome. Okay. That is from your creator. Well, 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 what is the cause of that? What is the cause of that particular defect? Because we have come to see that age has got nothing to do with it. What is the cause of that particular defect? Uh, 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 in in the in, when you have in chromosome, when in the division of uh, this chromosome, mm. we'll go back to a uh, high school. You you have uh, 23, uh, not 22, you know, chromosome and one is someone, which yes. is either Y or X chromosome. So, sometimes this uh, chromosome, you know, they're supposed to, when they are putting you, they're supposed to separate, you know, but some they do not separate. Mm. We call uh, non destruction. Or you can have some of them crossing over yeah, and creating a normal cell, carrying okay. double information for a particular area of the body. Like people carry uh, double information for the gene of the eye of the lower limbs. So this can cause a uh, uh, problem. That's what happens in the in, in down, it does not separate. You see, one, that chromosome. That is two that is supposed to separate, uh, yes. that is one that is supposed to separate into two. If it gets uh, another uh, chromosome that uh, come to attach to it, then it, 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 it carries an SS chromosome. It's not only uh, the SS, uh, SSS, then you have one or triple S as the mm. case may uh, as the case may be. So these are all abnormal. There's nothing uh, you can do when pregnancy is ongoing because that abnormal chromosome is an innate okay. yeah, innate part, part of, of the baby. Of the baby. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. So yeah. that baby will be born with that chromosomal genetic abnormal genetic problem and uh, it will have to live with it. So based on you know input from social scientists, some of them lead a good life and uh, they go up to become somebody if they are aggressively managed. Mm. And uh, uh, in certain situations, they do not do well. So those are what you will find as village uh, uh, in the south, so to speak. No, uh, is, is, is it the same situation uh, with um, autism? Is it the same no, case with autism? No, autism has to do with uh, uh, personal listening, uh, not listening, um, uh, having uh, abnormal uh, behavior in terms of lack of ability to process uh, the sound. So that is a different problem entirely. Normal babies, uh, baby can be born and develop it, you know, at that time. So, so they develop aggressive uh, personality and, okay. uh, uh, and they, uh, they, they, they manifest it in terms of their relationship with their peer group, with their parents. So some people call them distant uh, children, especially when the diagnosis has not been made. Once the diagnosis has been made, and they are managed appropriately by the appropriate physician. Uh, it was an expert in that area. Uh, they generally do well. Okay, doctor, can you just quickly roll over it? What are the commonest birth effects or congenital malformation that can occur? What are the commonest ones? The commonest one? Uh, Maybe well, about four or five commonest uh, ones. Well, and how they can be managed? We we'll, we'll, we'll talk about uh, small head, microcephaly. You talk about big head. Big head. You talk about cleft palate. Cleft lip and cleft palate is very very common. Mm. If you go to a marketplace and just look around, you will see quite a lot of old people who have not had their cleft lips and palate prepared. So there are some groups from here that go to uh, Africa to repair all these uh, uh, persisting. So it's quite common. Then club food is also very common, mm. which can be repaired. It's just a minor of the mm. uh, operating mm. procedure. I can say it in the mm. you know, uh, 
which is supposed to be done in in Benin. Uh, you don't have to go anywhere to okay. to to repair it, to straighten the legs. Mm. Quite a lot of our, our guys can do it. Okay. So all those cloth foods, web lips, web palettes can be repaired. Then web feet uh, and web fingers, all those can easily be repaired. Uh, 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 time, which is also abnormality, also can easily be repaired. So all these can, all these are pressure. They can be repaired by ordinary, not ordinary. By simple procedure. Yeah, by simple procedure. By simple procedure, yeah. Nice, okay. But when you now talk in terms of congenital malformation affecting the heart and lungs and maybe the kidneys, uh, you know, the reproductive tract, you know, need to go to a specialist. Okay. Uh, you know, that will uh, repair them. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, 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 doctor, um, what can a woman do? Is there anything a pregnant woman can do or expecting parents? Is there anything they can do by way of eating raw food or anything to avoid giving birth to children with um, defects? Is there anything at all? Yeah. They, should, they should eat wisely. Uh, the, the, the pregnancy is not when you experiment that you are not being used to. Maybe cravings. And, you know, women have cravings. <laughs> I know, but the women associated with big guys eating sand and eating uh, clay, very common in that part of the world. Uh, but you have to advise them uh, to, to avoid uh, all these things. Uh, uh, infection, you know, uh, parallel infection that can predispose to all these places. You know, then uh, unnecessary travel to certain areas where you have um, where you have privilege of certain mosquitoes um, in some areas. I don't mean there are no feelings mosquitoes that is everywhere. Mm-hmm. There are other types of uh, flies that can uh, create worse things that create uh, um, problems. But when it comes to abnormal blood and our abnormal chromosome, abnormal genes, uh, there's really nothing anybody can do. It's just so just so pray. Just only prayers. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, well, All right, doctor. I've said, well, it, well, I've said a lot of things. Yes, you <laughs> have. You have. And uh, we're thanking you so much for doing that. At least a lot of parents do know now what to avoid and what not to avoid. Uh, a meat or fact, doctor, there is this issue of the sun. You see, in this part of the world, they tell you that, oh, a woman gave birth to a baby with birth defect because she was walking under the sun. How true? No, it's not true because... Uh, Women need the sun because some of the vitamins we get, we get from the rays of the sun. Mm. So it's not true that uh, pregnant women should avoid the sun. No. Okay. Well, pregnant women should enjoy fresh air. They should go to open places because that's where you have the best kind of air. And that's what we lack everywhere is built up in our country. Mm. Where we need, you know, areas where, where people can go and have fresh air where the level of oxygen is very high, uh, you know, all these are quite uh, uh, important. Uh, sun, uh, sunlight, uh, sunlight, excessive sunlight in the desert can cause problems like sun snow, mm. but it's not the amount of uh, sunlight you get maybe okay. trekking from your home to the market. Okay. Exercise is very good for pregnant women, okay. trekking, having fresh air, uh, having sunlight mm. uh, is uh, optimal. Uh, about, yes. All right, Dr. Steve yes. Obama, thank you very much for at least taking time to talk to us on birth defects and congenital malformation. Before I let you go, Doc, give us, um, you know, an update on the COVID-19 uh, second phase that is, uh, you know, destroying and disturbing globally already. Well, it's, uh, at it's, least uh, we should uh, know how it is it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, we're talking about the second phase and uh, the worry thing is that there's a, a, a new variant of the disease. Okay, tell this, us about uh, it. The, this new variant uh, uh, of uh, uh, severe acute respiratory uh, syndrome, uh, 
virus, you know, it's just uh, very virulent and um, it attacks people quite easily. And uh, the morbidity and the mortality is higher than the, the original uh, uh, variant. So, well, people are taking progress. What I always advocate is that all those basic measures that have been helping us since, we should continue with them. Mm. Uh, you wash your hands, uh, don't avoid uh, crowded places, mm. stay in your home, you know, use uh, your mask. Uh, use your mask. Just know that it's not only uh, only covering your nose and your mouth, your hands that, that needs to be washed. Uh, stay away from crowded area, avoid handshaking. All these are all... Uh, Oh, Doctor, yes. what about what about the vac what about the vaccine? How effective is the vaccine? Uh, uh, How effective well, from, is the vaccine? From, from the product uh, product information, the vaccine is quite effective. It's been produced uh, using new methods. You know, in a, we were all saying that uh, this vaccine was produced so quickly within a year when vaccines for polio and other diseases were took, produced took by, like, like, over five, seven years. But what we should realize is that technology is very, very advanced. So things have changed. Yes. And besides, you know, they've been programming this DNA, RNA uh, uh, vaccine for quite some time. It's just that uh, COVID-19 came in and they're utilizing this, uh, they're utilizing it uh, uh, to produce this vaccine. So you can see the ease with which it's being produced. Over 35 countries in the world are producing their own vaccine. You know, in England, there are two types that have been produced, one from Cambridge and one another one from Oxford. We go to America, it's very similar. You know, even small Madagascar on the just outside of South Africa, they also produce their own vaccine. So, there are so many times, uh, Russia, they produce the German vaccine, is there the French? So, there are quite a lot of vaccine going on, because they are using almost the same uh, technology, technology. Uh, using the RNA uh, virus to produce it. Okay. But, there is nothing that is completely innocuous, that has no side effects. So, it will have side effects. And the only way to find out is to use this vaccine it's for a number of people to use this vaccine and for them to report any side effects. So within a year, we will know what this vaccine can cause. Okay, if they have heard of people <laughs> just have seen after the yeah. vaccine, we have heard of various uh, complications at the moment. Already. You now compute in relating to the number of people that have been vaccinated. Then you can talk about the incidence of complications. Okay. All right, Doc, time is not our friend. We, uh, we, already, we run out of time already. Thank you very much, okay. Dr. Steve, for being with us on the program, How to Live In. It's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Happy New Year in our Happy New Year, Dr. Steve, and enjoy your holiday. Thank you. All right, guys, this is all we're going to do today on the program, How to Live In. We'll see you again on Monday. That will be in 2021. Until then, please... Live healthy. Bye-bye.